Grace and Michael had a full week. Invitations were sent out. The time and scheduling was all ironed out this week with Pastor West as they met with Pastor West for their first marriage class, and it went successfully. Pastor West said to Michael and Grace, it was good to sit with you and pray with you and talk with you. Your next meeting with me is next week. So as we begin this journey into marriage, you have three classes with me and then we prepare for the wedding. So as, a, as far as I know, from what you've told me, Michael and Grace, the wedding will be at 11 o'clock on February 14th. So I would suggest to be at the church three hours in advance at best. So if the church reception area is appropriate for the groomsmen to be at, then if you feel comfortable being there or if you want to go to the back hall, that's fine too, wherever you feel comfortable. The bridal party will be in the basement. We're going to bring everybody up for photos after the wedding ceremony has been finalized. Is that okay with you? Yes. However you decide, Pastor Wes, whatever is easiest, said Grace. And Michael nodded. I agree. Whatever is easiest. As painless as possible. Are there any special requests from both of you that you have any final decisions that you would like for the wedding chapel to be decorated? Well, we have a florist that's going to come in and decorate the church pews. And it's going to be yellow roses. Yellow roses? You got it. Yes, yellow roses. My favorite. Aw, uh, that's beautiful. Pastor Wes agreed. Pastor Wes's wife comes in, Ashley, and says, Listen, Pastor Wes, my husband, that is. <laughs> Hello. And they see Pastor Wes's wife and they all wave to Pastor Wes's wife, Ashley. Hey, we have another appointment. Pastor Wes's wife is pregnant and they have to go to a doctor's appointment. Listen, we have to go to an appointment. We have to see a doctor ourselves. So we're going to have to cut this appointment short. But in the meantime, I will see you next week for our second marriage class and we'll talk we'll discuss parenting because we certainly need a class on parenting ourselves <laughs> don't we Ashley Ashley giggled and Pastor Wes and Ashley and Grace and Michael all got up and shook each other's hands and left the church aisle and pew so as they walked out Pastor Wes and Ashley just nodded and hugged each other. And Michael and Grace held each other's hand as they walked outside the church. And outside the church parking lot, Ashley and Pastor Wes got in their car and left, leaving Michael and Grace standing there waving as they left and waved goodbye. Ashley and Pastor Wes are eight months pregnant. That's what Michael said to Grace. Eight months pregnant? She doesn't look eight months pregnant. Oh, she's eight months pregnant. And she said she's feeling all of it. She looks like she's doing really good for being eight months pregnant, said Grace. Yeah. She looks very beautiful. That's what pregnancy does. Especially, she had way too much of that Arkansas water. She can attest to it too, I bet, said Michael jokingly. You always say that. I do always say that. Believe me. We go we we're at the right church, Grace said Michael. We are. As Michael and Grace make their way back to the cottage, they drop off 
some items that they have from church in the church pamphlets and leave it on the kitchen table. And they race back into the car to head back to Michael's house. On their way to Michael's house, they're having this idle conversation about decor. Mike, I know there's some things that we don't talk about often, but I love your decor at your house so much that I really want to tell you that I really want to know who your decorator is. Well, you know how the wedding planner, that all occasions wedding planner, well, they have a decorator there too. All occasions decorator, you can actually buy furniture from all occasions. They have wedding planners and decorators there. They do the decor. Is it country decor? Yeah, it's all, it's all farmhouse decor. Well, what does it, where is this at? Well, it's a garage and they actually rent the furniture out. But you can, if you give him a good price, he will do like what they call bidding. Oh, is he like an auctioneer? No, not really. If you give him a good price, he'll sell the furniture. But he's pretty pricey. So when I go to look for furniture or items that are unique, I usually go to all occasions. No kidding. Yeah, he's, like I said, he's his name is Richard. And he's not the kind of guy that really wheels and deals with people. But it, like I said, if you get to know him, he's the kind of person that will sometimes do a deal. And that's where I got some of my furniture and some of my furniture pieces. No kidding. I'm interested in going and checking them out. Well, we should go over there sometime. Let's check out some things at the thrift store though. Do you want to go to the thrift store? Mm, not right now. I'm not in the mood. I have to be in the mood to do it. Sometimes like what I do is I usually like to make things. Do you feel up to making something? Yeah. What do you feel up to making? Mm, I'm not quite sure. Being as it's winter time, I would go with a winter theme or since we're getting married in a couple weeks, let's go with the Valentine's theme. Ah, now you're talking. What do you want to do? I don't know. It's kind of hard to decorate and then do all these things, that these projects that I want to do. Well, they have a lot of ideas at Dollar Tree, Michaels, Home Goods. It's a, it depends on what you're interested in doing. Well, what I really should do is party favors. So if I go to Dollar Tree or Dollar General, I can get the treat bags and start there and get the party favors for the bridal party. Those are some things that I, I, I just kind of want to snoop around and see what we can come up with. Okay, well, we'll shop around and we'll just kind of see what, what is out there. We'll go to Dollar Tree. We'll go to Michael's. We'll see what's on sale there. Dollar Tree is, we can just pick up some random items. You know, my bridal shower is next week and my mom and my family is coming in next week. Yeah, I know. And so is my family. Is your brother Dan coming in too? Yeah, my brother Dan is coming in. My brother Matt, my brother Mike, his kids, my brother Dan and his son. His son's flying in from outside San Francisco. Um, his girlfriend, yeah, the whole family is going to be coming in. They'll be coming in on the 11th. They're all flying in all at the same time. So I told them all to at least let us know if they're having any issues with, you know, taking an Uber or, you know, whatever driving arrangements to the air, um, the hotel that is. So they're all going to be coming in at one time, probably some of them at the same time. Like with my sisters, they're all coming in at the same time. So 
they're most likely either take an Uber or a rental. I not I'm not quite sure what their arrangements are yet, but most likely they'll have a rental. Okay, well, if there's any questions on rentals, let tell them to ask me about the rentals because we have rentals on our lot too at the airport drive location. I'll help them out with that. Oh, that's great. That would work out perfect. Okay, so same with your brothers. Tell them if they need rentals, let me know in advance. There's still extra time that we can reserve a vehicle for them. Oh, I forgot all about that. I should have put that on my to-do list. Well, there's still time. We can still reserve a vehicle for them. Um, that's what we do up there is reserve vehicles just in case of an emergency. Usually we use it for the cars that we work on, but if in this case, we'll rent the vehicles out for them for an affordable cost because they're family, especially. Okay, that's great. So that takes a big weight off my shoulders because I know they're going to need a vehicle just to get around town and just go to the Titanic Museum. I want to I want to take the kids to the Titanic Museum and take them to Old Country Buffet. And I figured we would probably let them do their own thing too because they're going to want to do some sightseeing. I'm sure they're going to do their own touring and walking and jogging like they usually do. My one brother and his wife, they're marathon runners, so they'll probably do a lot of running. They're, their whole family is into running. So. so that's about it. So do you want to go to the Dollar Tree and let's get the treat bags ready for the bridal party, for the bridal shower? Yeah, let's get this ready because I have a golf outing next week too for the bachelor party. And that's where I'm going to meet your brothers. I'm going to meet your mom. Um, you're going to meet my mom, my dad. And yes, yeah, so we're, we better prepare for this. So between this week and next week, it's all about meeting everybody. So let's go over to my house first. Um, as far as making changes and adjusting, are you okay with moving into my house? Because I know you're on a lease. I already got that taken care of. I'm on a month-to-month -month lease. So that's not an issue. I can, my lease will be suspended at the end of the month of February. So I can move my furniture out by the end of February. So we can take our time at that. So by March 1st, I'll be moved out completely. So that won't be an issue. Um, we can move some of my personal items into the house. And that. with that being said, I'll just bring a suit. I'll just have a couple of suitcases and some my basic items at your house. So I'll be moved in pretty much the first week. Does that seem reasonable, Michael, said Grace? Yeah, that seems reasonable. Most of your stuff will be at the cottage. We'll we'll spend we'll still spend time at the cottage. Even though we're married, we'll still have time to kind of wrap things up. Plus, I'll have a moving company box up your stuff. You won't have to do all that work. Oh, uh, that'll be a relief. To get a moving company to do all that work for me, it's going to take a lot of pressure off me. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll pay a moving company to do with the boxing. Plus, you don't exactly have a bunch of stuff, so I'm not worried about it. We're going to probably put some of your stuff in storage and some of your stuff that you want to take with you that is in storage. You can pull it out and take it with you, you know, but why we're doing it that way is because if we do decide to buy a bigger house, I want to get a pool. I want to, I want to expand. I, I, I just have a bigger plan in mind. So when are we going to buy the house? This as soon as possible. 
as soon as we are finished getting married, the next goal is to buy a house. So I'll get this house ready to be put on the market. I'll have a handyman service, do all the extra things that need to get done and get the house prepped for sale. We'll go look, go house shopping. And I already talked to the bank about setting up college loans for kids and finding out what that would look like in the future. And I put us some money in savings for the house for the down payment. And I did some financial planning for our future. So we would have an expense account and we would have some money set aside. So I wanted to invest my money wisely. So I did all that when we first got married. So I want to see an investment into what we're going to get into as far as the house goes. So hopefully I'll turn a profit with the house being sold for what do you think the house is worth? Said Grace to Michael. Well, my house is probably worth three, close to three million. Really? So if we get a house for how much? It'll be about the same amount, maybe more. About, I'm looking to buy a house for four million. Why, why so much? Because the more value, the better profit we make, I mean, the investment into the house is my investment into my family. I figured it's worth it because I'd rather have more money invested into my property than, I don't know, I don't have a real accurate reason why. I just, I thought that it's just a better investment. Owning property is always wiser and better. I don't want to be without a good piece of property. It just turns out to be a wiser investment. That's all, Grace, said Michael. Okay, so if your property is worth $3 million and you get $3 million for it, then you are basically going to get what you want, right? Yeah, that's basically it. How much do you think you could get for it? Probably 3.5 at the most. Well, if you get 3.5 million, what would you do with the additional money and reinvest it into the into the business? Because I want to I want to make more money. The whole point is, if I make that additional 500 thousand, I reinvest it back into my business. I'm gonna turn a profit. I want to turn a profit in my business, and that 500 thousand, that additional 500 thousand, means. I'm going to get more productivity. I'm going to get more. I'm going to produce results is what I'm going to do with that money. I'll reinvest it more or less. Okay, said Grace. Sounds like you know what you're doing. So, yeah, I know what I'm doing. At least I think so at this point. I took a big risk reopening another. Well, no, not reopening, but opening up this newer branch but I think now that we're seeing that the management is doing well and the company's doing better and seeing the results that we're seeing I have a happy I would say overall outlook on what's going on now I like what I'm seeing I like the results I like the numbers I like what I'm seeing as far as my management there's an office romance going on right now. I made a speech about it in the break room. And the staff meeting was even better. I ended up on a TikTok video. It went viral. And to be quite honest with you, I had no idea that during my speech that somebody was taking a video of me on TikTok talking about an office romance that it's a running joke right now <laughs> and it's kind of silly but long story short of it I don't have a TikTok account but for some reason or another I got an offer to do a speech 
and the local newspaper wanted to do an article on my speech about office romances. And it's just kind of ironic. I'm getting married and I, here I am the subject of the com controversy of office romances because of my speech I made at work about addressing office romances. I just tried to point out a few things about drama keeping the drama outside the office doors. Like I don't want there to be what you call a soap opera digest story in the break room leaking out that somehow we have office drama. And that's what the TikTok video was about. And people were busting out laughing. And it is pretty funny, Grace, said Michael. Oh, that is hilarious. So you're on TikTok saying this and they want you to speak? Yeah, they want, They applauded me for it. They thought it was actually quite funny. So I'm the subject of this big hype right now about office romances. Put it to you bluntly, I just try to downplay the office romance, it just turns out the office romance that is going on, I try to address it to the two people that are in the middle of this office romance. And he ended up proposing to the, the manager and the general manager are the ones that are in this office romance. And he proposed to her right in the middle of the office. And now they're engaged. So it's no longer an office romance per se. Now it's an engagement. And they asked me to be the speaker. <laughs> it gets, it, it's like a rabbit hole, Grace, said Michael. It gets so deep that <laughs> the more I think about it, I feel like I'm in the middle of a soap opera. And that's what work relationships are like. You almost see this story unravel right before your eyes and you don't want people to get hurt. You know, you're trying to protect your business. I'm trying to be a CEO at the same time. I see this romance spiraling either together or apart. But I, one thing I'm trying to do is keep my business going in the right direction. And I don't want office drama at the same time. I'm not trying to pry into people's lives. I'm trying to be the best business operator at the same time, trying to manage a company. And I have no control over other people's decisions, what they do outside of the office. But I have to manage my business like a businessman. And one thing I don't want to do is intrude on people's personal lives, but I had to address the office drama, like please keep the office drama outside the doors. Like if you're gonna make it personal or you're gonna have be the subject of gossip, please keep it outside the office break room. Keep it just, I don't wanna hear about it. I don't wanna hear about the gossip. Yeah, gossip is very hurtful and very painful and you being the CEO, said Grace, you should be the one to address it. Well, I did address it. I did address the gossip because one of the things about employees, they are the first ones to skip their shift and not show up because of gossip and bullying and all these issues that we're dealing with. And one of the things is I have to nip it in the butt, Grace. Wow, I had no idea you had to deal with so much. Yeah, you're talking about young people. I, I have a lot of young people that work for me. I have a detailed department. I have a lot of younger women that work there. And yeah, I deal with a lot of different issues at the same time. Okay, Grace, we're here at my house. So while we're here at my house, not to change the subject, we can talk about the office romance story as we're at the, my house. No, really, you continue talking. 
Well, let's go in the house first. I'm thirsty. I need some water. I'm thirsty. As a, I'm thirsty too, said Grace. Okay, so what I was saying is, as we go in the house, let me unlock the doors. Okay, Grace, we're in the kitchen. I forgot how big your kitchen was. Are you sure you want to sell this house? Uh, yeah. It gets old, Grace, believe me. A big house, starting over, clean. What I want to ask you, Grace, is that our future starts now. Because really, in truth, I told you all the heavy stuff that's going on in the office drama, but really, that's not my life. My life is with you. What I really need to ask you is probably more important than what goes on at my workplace. What's that, said Grace. Should we consider having children or adopting or both? We could consider all of it. Just lay it on the table right now. Tell me what you want to do. Let's put our names on the adoption list. I know the waiting list is usually long, so let's just, let's go down to the adoption agency and put our names on the list once we're finished with our honeymoon. Okay, that's one call. What if we get pregnant? Okay, that's a possibility. You said so yourself if I keep drinking water from Harrison, Arkansas, I'm the one that's going to end up pregnant. So that's, that's true. And I'm not kidding. I'm going to need to go out golfing a lot if you're pregnant, because I don't know, you going into labor would be, I'll have to talk to Pastor West about what he does to get relief while his wife is pregnant. I'm pretty sure he has to go golfing too. What does he do for stress relief while his wife is pregnant? Well, I see him rubbing her tummy a lot. So he's so sweet with his wife. Yeah, I saw how he is. Pastor West is a nice man and his wife is beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful couple said Michael. Okay, Grace. So we made our call. We're going to plan our fam fa a family plan is what we're going to discuss with Pastor Wes. We're going to put our name on the list after we get married for adoption. If you end up pregnant first, then we're still on the list for the adoption too. We can do both. Grace, would you be upset if you got pregnant and adopted at the same time? No. You think you could handle it? No. You, could, you couldn't handle it? No. <laughs> Why you say no? I need a nanny. Okay, so we'll hire a nanny. You would need help is what you're saying. Yes. I would need a little help. Okay, you got a deal. I'll hire a nanny. Is there anything else? Well, we would have to retrofit our house for children. We would have to child-proof our home. Uh, let me think of other things. We would have to do a lot of things. I think that's pretty much it for the most part. Are there any other things that we would have to do? We... Childproof our home, mainly. If you have little kids around, that's the biggest, most radical change of your life. You already discussed the college fund plan that you were discussing with the bank. Um, learning to relax, going to art therapy, juggling a new schedule. 
feeding and knowing how to care for a newborn, breastfeeding, getting used to the idea of not sleeping on a sleep schedule, rotating schedule, adjusting your schedule on a different schedule from time to time. You're going to have to stay up with the baby. That means taking some time off from work from time to time. Working with your partners and managers at work and asking them to cover for you while you're at home helping me out once in a while. Can you do that? Can you commit to that? Said Grace. Yeah, I could do that. I can make I can rearrange my schedule, Grace. Because you're going to have to think ahead. Said Grace. Okay. We are going to talk to Pastor West about all this. Rearranging our lives means making changes. Just like moving, it's going to require us to make some changes. We're making big decisions right now. So while we make big decisions, it's obvious that we're going to have to adjust to the changes that we're making. So... Moving's one thing, getting married is a big adjustment. So we're just going to have this big transition time to adjust to all the new changes. And while we're adjusting to all the changes, we'll just take it one day at a time. What do you think, said Grace to Michael. I think you are very smart. You understand, you have insight, you're intelligent, and... We don't really need to hang out at the house. Let's go to the park. What are we going to do at the park? I don't know. There's obviously things we can do. We could go walking. We could go hiking. We could go to the fish pond. Why don't we go to the aquarium? That's a good idea. That aquarium, that they, it's just so beautiful. And Michael and Grace spend the afternoon at the aquarium. And they spend the whole afternoon strolling through, looking at different colorful fish and squids and dolphins. And this is the end of the episode.